Hi, welcome to this particular playlist on load balancing. So in this particular playlist, I will explain to you all the kinds of load balancers that are available in GCP. So we'll start off with the most basic and the most simplest load balancer and gradually we'll progress towards more complex load balancing that can be done in GCP. So let's start off by creating a first load balancer. So what we'll do is we'll just create a storage bucket and within the storage bucket, we'll just store a few HTML pages. And the first example that I'll be showing you would be just creating a load balancer so that the backend points to those particular storage storage buckets that we've created. So let's go and check the backend that I've created. So let's go to cloud storage. And within cloud storage, I've created a bucket and this bucket just stores an index.html page that just shows you this particular hello world as the output. So what we'll do is in our first example, we will plug this particular backend to a load balancer. So let's see how we can do that. So let's go back to our load balancer. Let's create a load balancer. So what we'll create first is an HTTPS load balancer. So let's click on start configuration. So here we have two options. The one is if you want to tra if you want your traffic to come from the internet, and the second is if you want to con create an internal load balancer. So for this particular example, we'll create a external load balancer, and it'll be of the type classic HTTP load balancer. Now there's a new version of a load balancer, external load balancer that's available. Now this is something that we'll be covering in the upcoming lectures. So for the time being, let's just go for the classic HTTP load balancer. Let's click on continue. And here you need to give a name for your load balancer. Let's just call this as my storage load balancer. And here we need to create a backend service. So, so what we need to create here is a backend service. So here we have the option of either creating a backend service or creating a backend bucket. So for this particular example, what we'll be creating is a backend bucket. So let's click on this. And all that we need to do here is just give a name. Just call this as backend bucket. And here just we just need to point to that particular cloud storage bucket. So let's click on browse and let's choose that particular bucket. So let's click on select. And for this example, let's not enable CDN. That's something that we'll do in the upcoming chapter. So all that we need to do is just click on create. Let's go to our front end now. So here the front end would be again connected to a IP address that will be generated when we create this particular load balancer. So everything is already set up. So as you can see that there's a tick mark here and we can connect to it using port 80. So all that we need to do now is basically let's click on this particular load balancer. Let's click on create and let's wait for this load balancer to get created. So once this load balancer gets created, it'll give you an IP address and you can use that particular IP address to connect to this particular uh, storage bucket. So now, meanwhile, as the load balancer is getting completed, let's look at some of the changes that I need to, I, I made for my particular bucket. So the first change that I did was I clicked on this particular edit web configuration and I updated the index page to index.html. So that's the first change you need to do. And the second page change that you need to do for this particular bucket is you need to go to your permissions and make this particular bucket publicly available. So all that I have to do here is I just need to go to add, make all users as the principal. And here what I've done is I've just given it the object reader access. So here you can see that that particular permission is given as well. Okay, so let's go back to our load balancer and let's see whether it's been created. So if I open my load balancer, you can see that there's an IP address that gets created. So let's copy this IP address and let's paste it. And you can see that this particular IP via the load balancer points to this particular bucket. So that's it for our first example. In our second example, what we'll do is we'll add a few parts to this particular load balancer and we'll also connect it to an IP, uh, a domain. So that's it for this one. I will see you in the next.